Hi folks, Thomas Simpson here with ThomasSimpson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today, in this episode, we're going to be talking and breaking down Kubernetes versus Hadoop and talking about specifically which one I would prefer if I were starting out today to learn as a data engineer, right? And so, you know, before we even get into it, I'm not saying that these are the same technologies, right? But I am comparing the popularity and I'm also com comparing you know, what some of the innovations are that we want to study as data engineers or, or just people in, in the industry in, as a whole, right? So, you know, where do we kind of see those markets? So let's jump right into that right after this. All right, so today's question comes in, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about the popularity of Kubernetes specifically and Hadoop and kind of, you know, where, where we're at, right? Like one of the biggest things right now is like the popularity in Kubernetes in the container world has eclipsed the popularity of Hadoop and the Hadoop ecosystem, right? Like if we were looking at a chart, you know, we would see the number of contributions and, you know, development to those open source uh, platforms that Hadoop has just been eclipsed by. Now, Kubernetes is not replacing Hadoop, but it is changing the way, and there are innovations in Hadoop that are taking advantage of containers and specifically Kubernetes. So let's break it down and talk a little bit about each one of these, and then we'll do a comparison of kind of where we see it going for data engineers, and then also provide you know, recommendations for which one I would choose if I were starting fresh today. So Kubernetes is an open source orchestration system for automating application, deployment, scaling, and management. It was originally designed by Google. Hmm, that sounds familiar, right? <laughs> so many things from the open source world comes. But if you think about Kubernetes, right? So if you've done anything with containers, and specifically around Docker, Kubernetes is that orchestration that layer that allows for you to cluster these together, right? So like think of like how Yarn works in the Hadoop world, and we'll talk a little bit about Hadoop here soon, but think of it as just being able to orchestrate. I have all these different nodes that are, you know, deploying my application or running 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 different portions of my application kubernetes is the secret sauce to say hey i need three of these or four of these and be able to you know not only do some of the load balancing and some of the other pieces but the orchestration to hey scale those up and make them elastic and, and and scale them back down you know kubernetes is synonymous with you know cloud native and what's going on with the cloud native so being able to you know move applications from Azure to AWS and make it seamless, right? Or on-prem, right? So to be able to develop something on-prem and be able to push it out. So really cool, really popular, right? So just another another open source piece that's came out of uh, Google. Man, thank goodness for Google and all the things they've done for the open source, source world. But just another way to, con to do that orchestration. So from a data engineer's perspective, really cool for us because it changes how we can deploy and use our application. So back back to what we're talking about, even the cloud native piece, right? Being able to deploy out, start something, you know, from a POC perspective to be able to start and, you know, take advantage of being able to use something on prem or, 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 or do it in the cloud and then pull it back down. That's really cool. And then also changes that application layer. But first, let's talk a little bit more about Hadoop. And then we'll talk about how it all kind of fits together. So Hadoop, we've talked about it a good bit here, been around for a long time, synonymous with you know, being able to scale out and make large, you know, large scale data decisions, right? Like be able to have that storage layer and also be able to analyze your data too, right? So think of it as a node-based architecture, similar to what we're talking about with Kubernetes, a little bit different, but a node-based architecture that's gonna allow for us to analyze data and be able to make decisions with it over a large cluster, right? Like you're, you're, you're building out a huge system here. So synonymous with, you know, originally early days of the MapReduce, but it's kind of taken over more of a, Hadoop ecosystem where we're talking about not only that storage layer of HDFS, but also that processing layer that actually is gonna allow for us to process the data on individual nodes, bring those back to your user, and be able to make, take advantage of all that, you know, under the covers. So, also another product, right, that uh, built and written off of research that was published by uh, Google. So, you know, not specifically you know, open source by Google, but some of the research paper that they, they put and they, they pushed out there led to the writing of a research paper and the open source portion of Hadoop that became popular, has been around. If you follow this channel, you've heard me talk about Hadoop a good bit too. Now let's talk a little bit about the architecture, right? So when we talk about Hadoop and the architecture, we're talking about, you know, running our data processing, maybe with Spark, right? Or Hive, it could be Pig or anything like that. 
Then you've got your layer that is your orchestration, and that's where Yarn comes in, right? It's going to process that we have you know, the resources on all these different nodes and spread out, and then your data layer comes in at HDFS, right? So that's where my data is stored within an HDFS perspective. Well, what Kubernetes can do, right, so how it fits in the big data world and where we really see it is, think of Spark, TensorFlow, you know, any of those, any of those um, tools that we were talking about. Now our orchestration layer can be actually with Kubernetes, right? And then we can do persistent storage in our databases, S3, or there are some innovations out there that you can see to do it in HDFS, but you're seeing it used more in a cloud native perspective, so a little bit different change of the architecture. The really cool thing about it is you're, you're actually abstracting away. So you're not only just using Yarn just for you know, building out this cluster and building out a system, you're using Kubernetes, which can also do your application development too, right? Like you are, I'm sorry, application deployment. So, you know, being able to build cloud native applications that are not just for data analytics, but maybe serving out your, you know, your web hosts and some of the other pieces. So, you know, really a lot of innovation uh, around that and really cool, right? There's a, there's a lot of stuff and, and I just can't go into it. I'm trying to give you a high level from here, but there's a lot of resources, a lot of courses out there, and a lot of other things that maybe we should pick up at some point to talk about around the innovations with Kubernetes. But it, it's really cool. It's really kind of you know, changing, it's in flux, right? Like if anybody, you know, if anybody's saying, hey, it's always going to be this way, it's one of those things that's continuing to innovate just like the data analytics um, area too. You know, at the end of the day, I guess the question is, you know, if I were starting out today, would I, would I focus solely on Hadoop or would I focus solely on Kubernetes if I could only choose one, which you can never only choose one, but I, but I appreciate and I love these types of questions too because they really push me to, you know, to, to make a decision, right? So today, I mean, one of the things, the biggest thing, you know, cloud is a huge topic, right? And being able to do things cloud natively, so being able to support it on-prem, being able to support it and push it out to different multi-cloud, you know, there's so many different, so many different topics and buzzwords in, in that. But if we really look at, look at the core to that and that decision-making, Kubernetes is really, you know, one of the big portions around that. And that has a huge impact on what we're doing from a data analytics perspective. And frankly, because of Hadoop's not so much ease to use in the cloud. I think that's one of the reasons that we've seen Hadoop kind of wane with their growth, right? Like, you know, we've seen, you know, Hortonworks, Cloudera merge together, MapR um, be, be picked up and purchased. Um, and then, you know, also IBM's big insights, right? Because of the fact that these were systems that would only, would only work on-prem, right? Like you had other options and other cloud uh, perspectives, but AWS had their, their version versus you know, Azure had their version under the covers, but if you wanted to really pull it back into your own, you know, your, your on-prem area or push it out, it was a little more complicated. And you couldn't just move it from AWS to, to Azure. So Kubernetes has really kind of pushed that, not just from the analytics world, but, you know, from that perspective. So, you know, if you made me choose today and you said, hey man, you can only choose one, and it's something that you've got to get skilled up on in the next three to six months, I'd choose Kubernetes. You know, not saying that I would never, you know, not, not learn Hadoop from that perspective, but I mean, if I had to choose between the two of those right now, I think there'd be a bigger opportunity for, um, you know, data engineers and specifically, you know, systems administrators and those kinds of, uh, you know, people that are more hands-on with the administration piece. I think that's where we're gonna see a lot. And you're seeing a lot with the open source tools out there in the Hadoop ecosystem, right? Like Spark and, you know, some of the things going on with Project Submarine, just being able to support containers. So that's all I have today for Big Data Big Questions. If you have a question, make sure you put it in the comment section here below or reach out to me. Um, I'll do my best to answer those questions here on the next episode of Big Data. Big